Getting charged with a DUI can be overwhelming. Just getting arrested and booked can be a humiliating experience. So what should you do if you're being accused of driving under the influence? This video should give you some answers and insight if you're facing a DUI. In this short video, I'll teach you the most important things to know about your DUI case so that you'll understand your rights, know what to expect in court, and learn how to find a good lawyer to help you defend you through the process. It helps to recall and document the events from the night of the incident while everything is still fresh in your mind. You might want to write down a timeline beginning with how much and at what times you ate or drank. Typically, a DUI arrest begins with a routine traffic stop, but random DUI checkpoints are not uncommon. It is lawful for law enforcement to stop someone on suspicion of drunk driving if their driving was erratic and seemed unsafe, like weaving in and out of one's lane. But most DUI stops result from less serious violations like speeding, failing to come to a complete stop at a stop sign or red light, or even failing to use one's turn signals. After approaching the driver, the officer may develop a reasonable suspicion that the driver is under the influence based on objective symptoms, including slurred speech, odor of alcohol, or bloodshot eyes, or just the things the driver says in response to the officer's questions. If the officer developed a reason to believe that the driver is under the influence, then he or she will probably ask the driver to exit the car and perform field sobriety tests or FSTs. These are physical tests to help the officer evaluate one's coordination and reaction time as well as their balance. While there are many FSTs, some of the more common tests include the horizontal gaze nystagmus, where the officer attempts to observe unsteady or bouncing eye motion. The walk and turn and the one leg stand are called divided attention tests and require one to follow a series of instructions and perform a series of movements while maintaining one's balance. The Romberg test may be used to test one's balance and internal clock. The finger to nose test may be used primarily to test balance and coordination. If you agree to perform the FSTs, then they will likely be used against you, even if you feel like you pass them. After you complete the FSTs, the officer will likely ask you to submit to a breath test at the scene with a handheld device called a preliminary alcohol screen or PAS test. These devices are capable of accurate measurements, but they are prone to error and many factors can cause an inaccurate result. Based on these tests, the officer will decide whether he or she has sufficient evidence to believe that you are driving under the influence. Under California law, a driver is obligated to submit to a chemical test of his or her blood or breath if lawfully arrested for driving under the influence. If you refuse to take a chemical test, then you may face an allegation of refusing, which brings more serious penalties. The official breath test should be on a bigger machine than the PAS and should be more accurate. In the alternative, you may have been given the choice to submit to a blood test. If you choose to provide a sample of your blood for testing, the agency should save a fraction of the sample so that you can have it tested by an independent laboratory. You may have spent a few hours in custody before you were released on your own recognizance or you posted bail. Usually, after one is cited for a DUI, they are given a notice to appear which contains the date, time, and location to appear in court. They are also given a temporary license after the officer takes away their regular license. If you look closely at this form, you will see that the language indicates that you have 10 days to request a hearing before the DMV. After being arrested for a DUI, the DMV is usually notified and will typically initiate their own separate administrative case against you to try to suspend or revoke your license to drive. It is a good idea to request a hearing even if only to preserve your rights. Be sure to ask for discovery and a stay of the suspension pending the hearing. This should allow you to keep driving at least until the day of the hearing. 
You may do this by contacting the DMV driver safety office closest to where the arrest took place. The hearing allows you to challenge the suspension of your license. Your case is assigned to a hearing officer who will usually rely exclusively on the police report at the hearing. Although the hearings are difficult to win, you should investigate your options and possible defenses with an attorney. Next, remember that while a DUI is a serious matter, your life will continue regardless of how it is resolved. Try to make the best of things and understand that it will all be behind you soon enough. Let's talk about your court case. In addition to huge increases in insurance premiums, court fines, and legal fees in the thousands of dollars, a first-time DUI conviction can affect your driving record for 10 years in many states. A DUI could also result in custody in the county jail, public work service for the sheriff, a suspended driver's license, months of DUI classes, and several years of criminal probation. Your court case will begin with an arraignment. This may also be referred to as the court appearance date on your paperwork. If you have an attorney, he or she may be able to appear in court on your behalf. Some courts will let you speak with a public defender for assistance at arraignment. Otherwise, when the judge calls your case, he or she will expect you to either request a public defender. If you do this, the judge may ask you about your financial situation. Continue the arraignment. People often do this for additional time to hire a private attorney or investigate their options. You may enter a not guilty plea and the court will give you a future date called a pretrial or you may resolve the case with a guilty or no contest plea. The prosecutor may give you a favorable plea deal early in the process to clear his or her caseload. At the arraignment, you should get a criminal complaint which lists the charges against you. The typical first-time DUI will have a complaint that lists two charges. The first charge is driving while impaired. The prosecutor will have to prove that you drove under the influence of drugs or alcohol and will rely primarily on the officer's observations as well as any other witnesses. The second charge is driving with a blood alcohol level of 0.08% or higher. This charge is usually based primarily on the chemical tests. You should also receive a copy of the police report at the arraignment if you did not already get it from the DMV. You should review this carefully for inaccuracies or exaggerations. Officers have lots of paperwork after a night of arrest, and like anyone, they like to save time when possible. Some officers will take shortcuts like copying and pasting sections from old arrest reports or using templates with boilerplate descriptions to help them save time. Other officers will simply remember things incorrectly, exaggerate, or lie to help their charges stick. You should also make an estimate of your blood alcohol level at the time of the test to determine whether the value in the report seems accurate. According to DMV publications, for a 180 pound male, it should take two to three drinks to reach 0.08%. The three drinks could be wine, beer, or hot alcohol, but obviously the potency and sizes of drinks can vary. And it will take more alcohol for a larger person to reach 0.08% and many other factors can affect one's blood alcohol level and impairment. So what do you do now? And how do you find a good attorney to represent you? You may have realized that there's no shortage of lawyers who are eager for your business. Many spend a lot of money and effort on advertising, but may lack the experience and dedication to competently handle your case. it is usually best to talk to a few different attorneys before signing anything. Be aware that some lawyers will use scare tactics and a seemingly long list of credentials to try to convince you to retain them. It is a good idea to ask for referrals from people who you might know in the legal field. An attorney should be able to tell you what the standard sentence is in your jurisdiction if you accept a plea or if you're convicted. The good news is that most first-time DUI defendants do not have to serve more time in jail, but are instead placed on a term of probation for five years or less. In fact, the majority of DUI cases are resolved through pretrial plea agreements negotiated by defense lawyers. 
Most DUI cases do not end up in jury trial and few cases are dismissed. Your attorney should be able to work out the best plea agreement for your situation or aggressively litigate your case. This concludes our video on DUI basics. Be sure to check the Law Intel website for additional information as well as a list of questions that you should bring when you interview attorneys. Also, be sure to always find an alternative to driving if you've been drinking. And if you're ordered to a term of probation, be sure to follow the judge's order and remain in compliance with all of the terms.